concern is that the large vast amount of the populace is going to kind of go back to sleep and we're going to see this neoliberal neoconservative uh author crypto fascist authoritarian um regime kind of come about so uh you know i wanted to i wanted to kind of give some uh, hope for for the people that are still in the fight um and educate those that do think that things are going to be a lot better and go back to normal. So I don't, I don't know if I have those kind of listeners. <laughs> uh, I'm sure some people are. I'm, I'm sure some people look at the Democratic Party and think that they are the, they are the good guys. They're the bastions of uh, morality and, um, you know, progressivism and so on and so forth. When, when, re when really, what the Democratic Party is, is um, corporatists, neoliberals that uh, are more interested in theatrics and performance and platitudes than they are in being a governing force and pushing back against um, the GOP and against any sort of human rights violation that, uh, that, that anybody would be committing. Uh, the Democrats are just as pro-war as the Republicans and, and uh, should be chastised and should be criticized as much as the republicans are um and and because there are people on the left that have this uh, uh i don't know if opinion's really the right word here but because people have this opinion i'll, I'll, I'll say opinion for the for the sake of uh, you know for sake of argument here but because they have this opinion the democratic party has um taken the opportunity to attack them in various different ways. Uh, over the last four years, we've seen uh, the Green Party get attacked, the Libertarians get attacked, the, the spoiler argument has come up quite a bit, and then that spoiler argument transformed into this, um, this updated McCarthyist viewpoint of, uh, you know, if you voted for the Green Party, then you were allied with Russia. Um, and, you know, they instead of looking inward... The Democratic Party pretty much blamed everybody except themselves. And really, when you when you have a loss like that, when you have a candidate that you have groomed for the leadership position of of you know uh, the the greatest economy of all time, right? That's what America has proposed as the greatest economy, the greatest country of all time. When you have a a candidate like Hillary Clinton that was groomed for that uh, purpose. And she loses to a racist, chauvinist, sexist television star, a reality TV star like Donald Trump. The first thing to do is to look at yourself and say, well, where did we go wrong? What did we lose? You know, did, did we fuck up somewhere? And instead of that, the Democratic Party basically said, uh, election fraud, Russia hacked the election, Russia, Russia, Russia. And put, you know, spent four years bringing a new wave of McCarthyism, um, you know, into the folds of American history. Uh, and and then they propped up a different racist, uh, a different sexist rapist candidate of their own because they they were they were abandoning the progressives, in, in my opinion. So what do I think we should do next? My viewpoint is is this is I think whatever your cause is, whatever issue is that you are most passionate about, uh, I would say keep fighting about that. Don't don't let up. Don't drop your guard because this is very much not the time to um, to drop our guard. So you know, um, I, I'll I'll start with this because I do think that this is an issue for a lot of people. That's an important issue for a lot of people is electoral politics. If electoral politics is your bread and butter, well, that's not the right phrase, is it? <laughs> if electoral politics is the most important thing to you, um, then I think what you should be doing is, first of all, pushing for more parties. You should be advocating for the Green Party to be on all 50 states, on the ballot for all 50 states. They should be allowed to run in Senate races. They should be allowed to 
advertise on television. There shouldn't be um, financial blockades to the Greens or, or the Libertarians or the Movement for a People Party or the U- Unity Party or the Social Alternative Socialist Alternative Party. They should all be able to be on the forefront. We should have as many choices as we possibly can. The duopoly has failed us. So if you are somebody that looks and says it all comes down to voting and electoral politics, that is the most important thing, uh, that is the greatest of all civic duties, then yeah, you should be you should be fighting for more parties to be included on the ballot. That the diversity of thought doesn't end with Republican and Democrat. If immigration is your thing, then you should be uh, you should be definitely defending immigrants. You should be pushing back against ICE. You should be advocating for getting rid of uh, ICE, which is unconstitutional, and it separates families. And was put under a Democrat. If you know uh, the drug war is your thing, then uh, you know the, you 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 probably also um, have criminal justice as 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 a uh, uh, center point of your issues, right? Let the central focus of your issues. If if the legalization of of marijuana, the legalization of certain psychedelics that is a core issue for you, then I'm sure criminal justice plays into that as well, uh, considering the prison industrial complex puts nonviolent offenders behind bars as much as it does violent offenders. And um, not just that, but there is also a major racial divide uh, within within the drug war, and that's been proven, as as John Ehrlichman basically said, uh, that's exactly what we did. We wanted to destabilize the black community and the anti-war community. So we, we created this war on drugs and associated, uh, you know, um, weed with the hippies and heroin with the blacks so that we could go destabilize their communities. And he said that shit to a reporter on tape, proving once and for all that the Nixon administration really didn't understand tapes. But if, but if that is your, uh, your your central focus, then you should be talking about criminal reform, criminal justice reform. Defunding the police should be, um, should be something that you should talk about. You should be looking at someone like Joe Biden and saying, why aren't you defunding the police? Why aren't you listening to the uh, majority of Americans? You want you want your cabinet to look like America, but you don't want it to represent America, because most Americans, white, black, brown. Asian, Latino, men, women, trans, binary, gender binary, LGBTQ, they all b- would agree that the prison industrial complex has gone too far, that the militarized police t- it, it has gotten uh, completely out of hand in this country. And yet Joe Biden looks at it and says, well, we need to give them more money for training purposes. Well, they have a shit ton of money. Why can't they allocate some of their shit ton of money instead of buying a tank or a sound cannon or a water cannon into de-escalation tactics or better training procedures or hiring a psychologist or a sociologist that knows how to deal with mental illness? These are things that I think we should be advocating for based on what we believe is our central issue. I don't know if I have a central issue, to be honest. Um, there, there, There's a lot that I, I push for. I, I think um, decent human rights and basic needs being covered by a competent government. Maybe that's, that's, my, that's my thing. Um, I've, I've talked a lot about strikes in the labor movement as of late. Um, I think learning, learning our past so that uh, we understand how we got to the present to make our future better is imperative. Um, it's a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about wasn't really taught to me in schools. It was stuff that I learned much, much later in life. And... Uh, you know, if education is your passion, then, uh, you know, you should 
you should be focused on how teachers are treated. You should be f- advocating for the better treatment of not just the educators, but the better payment of the educators. There should be more money given to teachers. Uh, their their responsibilities shouldn't be um, as heavy. They shouldn't be a babysitter as well as a, as as somebody that feeds the the students and takes care of uh, emotional problems and so you know what I mean. They, they do a lot. They do a lot more than just being teachers, and that is a lot of pressure that's put on them. Really, what we have seen in the last year is. Uh, through through the pandemic is the intersectionality of all of these uh, all of these topics. If you're going to talk about immigrants and you're going to talk about the detention centers and you're going to then you know that leads into the prison industrial complex of how we're making money off of prisoners, we're making money off of nonviolent crimes. Um, it, it, you know, immigration also goes into the problems with bureaucracy, right? It, 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 it very much, very clearly shines a light on how these government agencies can absolutely do the things that they want to do, but they choose not to. It's the same thing with health care. They can very easily enact some kind of universal basic health care, right, or universal health care, Medicare for all, but they choose not to. The DNC made a choice earlier this year to basically say that they're never going to adopt Medicare for all as part of their policy, and Joe Biden has come out and said that he's going to veto it. So we have this new president that that has very much come out and said nothing is going to fundamentally change, and here's how nothing is going to fundamentally change. And there are some people. There's a lot of people that are in support of that because he talks academically sometimes. But he picked Kamala Harris, another somewhat affluent politician. But she's a woman, right? So the identity kind of clouds the record. And when you bring up the record of these people, if it's someone like Joe Biden. The notion that they're just not some uh, a, a, a narcissist like Donald Trump clouds the record. With Kamala Harris, it's the identity that clouds her awful record of imprisoning parents and so on and so forth. This is not the time to go back to complacency. Complacency is why we got a Donald Trump. This is the time, if you have conservative family members, if you have family members that believe something differently than you, it is the time to talk to them, understand where they're coming from, present your point of view and perspective and why you believe what you believe so that they can understand where you're coming from. Unity isn't, uh, I put a woman in charge of the DOD. I put a, a a black woman in charge of uh, the the federal budgets. Uh, who cares if that if that person is still going to spend more money on wars than they are on getting people health care and getting people food? Then you're no better than the demagogue that was in office for for four years. It's a difficult line to see for certain people because they are. They were just couldn't fathom that someone like Donald Trump would ever uh, be elected in America. And part of that is because I think that's part of the left believing in that nationalistic rhetoric that America is the greatest country on the planet. We elected our first black president. We're the greatest country on the planet. We overcame our, our, our race issues with Barack Obama. No, we didn't. Let's not kid ourselves. If we really did, we wouldn't have gotten a Donald Trump. You just kind of ignored that you had race problems because we got someone like Barack Obama. I know I went off a little bit on a tangent. 
<laughs> uh, there, but um, it is it is how those things are connected. You need to learn the history. You need to know the truth behind these people. You know, Obama didn't get rid of racism, and he wasn't hope and change. He was very much the status quo, and he and the, the only difference again is that he was an attractive face in the status quo. So because he was attractive, because he was the first black president, he got a pass on a lot of things. And if you're going to be the leader of a country that values democracy so much, then we don't give a pass that way. We have to be vigilant. We have to be critical. And we have to push back on them. And we're never going to push back on them if we choose complacency and we choose brunch. Most, If you enjoy this podcast, if you... Uh, are a avid listener, a weekly listener to this podcast, please make sure that you are subscribed to this on whatever platform you are listening to this on, whether it's directly from Libsyn, whether it's uh, on iTunes or Stitcher or Spotify or whatever you're listening to, please make sure that you are subscribed. Uh, and uh, if you are subscribed, please make sure that you share this content out because content like this often gets suppressed by big mainstream uh, corporate t tech companies. Um, YouTube and Facebook usually throttle the content that I put out there, so it's super helpful when uh, when fans of the show uh, share the content out. And uh, one more thing is is that this podcast is now available on Rockfin as well. So go to rockfin.com slash krishmohanhaha um, and you can check out the podcast there. You can become a premium member uh, and get access to all my videos, but not just my videos, but also videos from Ron Placone, Lee Camp, Whitney Webb, uh, Jimmy Dore, Graham Elwood, um, Eleanor Goldfield, people that have been on this podcast before. Uh, so it is a fantastic platform. You can leave us a tip. You can become a subscriber. Uh, really, the big focus of there is uncensored content and to ensure that uh, content creators get paid for the work that they do. Lastly, if you want to become a sustaining member uh, or make a one-time donation, if you want to and have the ability to, you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Go to the Donate tab, and you can become a sustaining member uh, any which way that you would like, either via Patreon, PayPal, directly on my website, uh, or over on Bandcamp where you would get uh, monthly collections of stand-up comedy material that uh, nobody hears. That's material from fringe festivals, material that don't make it on CDs, early versions of shows, storytelling shows, um, things that you that uh, the the general public wouldn't wouldn't particularly have access to. Uh, so that's on the Bandcamp page. Uh, and while you're on my Bandcamp page, you can also uh, download all of my stand-up comedy albums. I have several out and, and a few different versions of the uh, albums that I have released as well. Um, you can download those. Most of them are available for free as a uh, pay-what-you-can platform. And that is available on krishmohanhaha.bandcamp.com. Uh, K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.bandcamp.com. Uh, Bandcamp uh, is, is the music platform that gives most back to the artists themselves. Um, so if you have the ability to, you can become a sustaining member or just download uh, you know, download the album from there or become uh, a follower. You can follow me on Bandcamp as well. So there's a couple different ways to um, to help out this show. This show is independently produced. Uh, I have no corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you, the people, uh, the people that listen, that share, that become sustaining members or make one-time donations. I uh, very, very much appreciate uh, all the things that you guys do and very very much appreciate you guys listening to the show uh on a weekly basis um i hope you guys are enjoying the content 